hundreds of Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. This man's going to be fine in Hollywood coming up this weekend at the yep. Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, the Guitar Hotel, Hard Rock Live as BKFC is back in town. This man is can only be said he's the he's the best to do it in BKFC. There's not really a, there's not really a, a a man who's close with this man's resume. A double champ, never lost. Uh, this resurgence that he has had in BKFC, he is the best at this sport. I don't know if you know this, Leroy. I was once a former voter of bare knuckle uh, fighting. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I couldn't keep up with every card. But I will tell you, I never not voted this man number one pound for pound. That's how good he is. Luis Baboon Palomino joining us here on the show. What's going on, champ? How are you? Good, good, brother. How are you, man? How you guys doing? Thank you. Good. We're, good. We're good, man. We're good. Luis, if you could just explain. You are you have become a master at this this old sport that has become new again. You've, you've been one of the uh, the pioneers to bring it back to the mainstream. What makes you so great at this particular combat? Like, you've fought plenty of uh you know disciplines over your life your fighting resume of course goes back uh, many ways but this nobody touches you in bare knuckle <laughs> yeah man i think it was just it was truly my calling in, in my mma in my mma run where i got to collect four world titles i i had my my disputes where the wrestlers and the grapplers that would like take me down and like, hold me down and nearly whisper in my ear please don't get up again you know what i mean it was, the, it was very hard to give people to trade with me you know so then I try to get into boxing, and for boxing, I'm relatively old, right? I'm 42 years old. Uh, I was about, what, 37, 38 when I was trying to step into boxing, glove boxing. But nobody would take me serious, you know what I mean? It's, you know, nobody wanted to take a risk against an older dude, you know what I mean? When no, when no right. fight, I can possibly knock you out. But then when bare knuckle surfaces and, and steps in, man, it, you know, it made all the sense. I was practically retired from fighting. And I said, but I wasn't mentally retired yet. You know, I was, I was retired on paper, you know. So when I saw that and I was saying, okay, hold up, hold up a second. You mean to tell me that they're forced to trade punches? We don't got to use gloves and nobody's going to try to hold me down? <laughs> Sign me up, man. You know, so I said, hey, this is it. This, this. Just from a natural personality, from a, from, from a natural instinct, is I'm made for the sport. Apart from that, I'm a very hardworking person. I'm not a talented person. You know, I've, I've been in the gym with plenty of talented fighters that end up crashing down the line because they just don't put in the work they're supposed to put in. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a student, man. I'm a student of life. I like to learn, and I continue to learn, and I think that's what keeps my mind young and my, and my body young. Now, Lewis, what, what you're doing now in BKFC, is that, you know, when you fight, do you have to choose your punches selectively? Like it's not, it's not a game where you just go in there and just try to outwork the guy. You gotta, you gotta choose how you're gonna hit a guy, when you're gonna hit a guy, and your approach has to be different than every other kind of sport that you've been in, where activity doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's a good question, man, because you know people. Try to compare this to MMA, to, to glove boxing. This is a whole different entity, man. So it's a complete different game. You know what I mean? Um, you have two sides of bare knuckle boxing. You have the, the animal, the animal instinct, the bestiality that comes out. You want to just get in there and brawl. And, and you know, I'm going to knock this dude out in the first round. And I'm going to just trade and see who hits harder. You have that side of bare knuckle boxers. And most, you know, I think most of us are that. And then you have very few... You know, guys that come from the MMA, from the MMA world, from the boxing world, or glove boxing, where there's a little more of the science of the fight and their thinking, you know, the strategy and the technique and the combinations. You know, what separates me from all of them is that I can combine both the way that I right. do. So to answer your question, man, I'm not the type of fighter that's going to go. I throw a lot of punches. You know, okay. a fight where I've thrown 180 some punches. That's only five too many rounds. 180 some that I landed. 172 of. You know what I mean? So. When it comes down to it, man, you, you have to be selective. Um, just to, for example, in my very last fight, I fractured uh, one of my knuckles, and that was the first fracture I suffered in eight fights of fighting bare knuckle boxing. And it's because in this specific fight, in my last fight, being the last fight in, in the contract and whatnot, I wanted to, and I'm already untouched, I'm unbeaten, you know, people can barely cut me. Um, so I said, you know, I want to make a, a show for the fans. Right. I threw on a show in there and I threw a little more aggressively and a little more than normally. Then I got into more of a war than I normally have to, because I really don't have to. 
the way that I see these guys that I'm stepping in there with, you know, and I did it more to put on a show. And, you know, that's what happens. You, know, you can get clipped, you can get knocked out, you can get cut, or you can hurt yourself. I landed a punch right on the forehead of the dude, you know, and a fresh in my hand. That was like in the second round, you know what I mean? So I'm like one tire down, I don't even know it, but I'm on one hand, one hand off, you know? And I'm still, but that's, you still throw it, you know, because you're, you're in a, you know, in a moment of heightenedness, you know, it's very, you, you feel pain, but it's like, there's two types of fighters out there, man. People that ignore pain and people that fold by pain. I ignore it and I grow, you know what I mean? So, you know, all good, you know, we, we already healed hundred percent, good, ready to go. That was six months ago. But yeah, to answer the question, man, you have to be, if you want a longer career in this game and you don't want to give fights away to a tragic, you know, injury, you know, um, you want to be a little selective with your punches. You guys can watch Luis Baboon Palmino coming up. He's going to be fighting the main event at uh, BKFC Hollywood, Florida, BKFC 45 at the uh, Hard Rock Hotel coming up on Friday. If you guys want to go out and support one of Miami's own, uh, has been fighting down here for a long, long time and is the best double champ to ever do it in BKFC. Uh, Luis, for, for your standpoint, you mentioned that at boxing, you felt like, you know, it was too, you were, you were at an age where you weren't going to be ever, give, ever given the opportunities. How long do you expect your BKFC run to go? Like what are, what are the, you've already kind of, you've done things that I don't know will ever be touched in the sport. So what, what are the things that you still want to check off before it's all said and done? Well, you know, uh, God willing and, and, you know, with all the respect to my opponent, I'm looking past him, but, uh, I, I believe in my work. I believe in my in my talents. You know, I've, I've done everything I need to do to win this fight. So once we win this fight, we're nine and zero with six title defenses. You know, both records. Nobody has reached nine and zero. Nobody has reached eight and zero. Nobody has defended the title more than three times. I defended it five times, going for the sixth time uh, defense consecutively. First and only two weight division undefeated champion in bare knuckle history. Um, at this point, man. I'm only interested in names that are known worldwide. So as long as there's just a name that's going to motivate me and push me to come in there and do what I do, you know, and do it the best way that I do it, I, I'm, I'm doing the year by year, man. So like the way that I'm assessing myself before I had a number, I said, you know, 10 and 0, 10 and 0 would be it. But I know I can reach 10 and 0 this year. And by the end of the year, like I did last year, right? When I get to the end of the year in, in, uh, in Christmas, New Year's, I say, okay, did I lose ability, you know, agility? Did I lose speed? Did I, did I get punished? Did I, did I lose a fight? Did I get punished? Like, am I getting beat up? Am I slowing down? Am I not learning? And you know, I check all those boxes, you know, and, and uh, if, it's, if it's a no to all that, then I sign to myself for another year and I take it year by year, you know what I mean? So like right. once at the end of the year, I reach, you know, hopefully I reach a 10 and 0 and uh, I'm undefeated and you know, I'm not being touched. I'm not. I'm not losing rounds. You know, I'm not getting hurt. Then I say, okay, let's do another year because I, I believe, man, age-wise, I can do this to like probably 45, 46, man, because of the way that I take care of myself, the way that I take care of my body, and I'm a late bloomer, man. You know, what I mean, I started. I started fighting professionally at the age of 26, so my fight life, even though I have 17 years in the game, I've been the one giving most of the damage. You know, I don't have damage. You know what I mean? So. Right. I'm here to fight this. When you say names, do you mean like somebody like a big name in the UFC now that transfers over? That's what interests you. Like, what is a name that intrigues you? Can you like do you, you got to have a couple that are on top of your head? Yes, man. Yes. So, so look, man. I don't know if you know, but we had Chad Mendes, world, you know, worldwide known name, right, from the UFC, yep. top, you know, contender of the title. Chad Mendes came in, man. They gave him a fight. I asked for him right away. They didn't give it to me right away. I was already the champion. So say, hey, let him get his feet wet. So then I wanted to skip him down the line, give him a title fight. And the dude just ducked me for a whole year, man. Uh, an entire year, me calling him out publicly, he just said no. And then he comes out of nowhere, and he's going to fight Eddie Alvarez, which just got signed to be KFC, right? And I'm like, what the, you know, so I, I, I go in and I, and I challenge both of them. I tag them both. And Chad sends me a personal message. Hey, look, champ, after this fight, I'm going to retire publicly. So I leave him alone already, you know, he's done in his head, you know, as far as fighting. So now uh, Eddie Alvarez wrote to me too, and Eddie Alvarez is, you know, we're going back and forth. I'm being respect I'm a very respectful person. I'm going, I, I think, I don't know if you took the respect, you know, for weakness or something. He's like, you know, you and I would never fight for money. I'm like, what you, what you mean, man? You know, like, 
you 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 collected uh, world shipping. You chased gold, Bellator. You did it in the UFC, the biggest shows in the world. You try to do it in one MC in Japan. Now you come to to BKFC and and you don't want to chase gold. They said that you you don't believe that you can get it. You don't believe that you can sustain it. You know, or, or you're all of a sudden what? So, you know, I have a big problem right now with all the. You know, I'm a fan of of, of Chad Mendes. I was a fan of Eddie Alvarez. You know, um, I've challenged people like Thiago Alves at 175. I'm, I'm 172 soaking wet, man. You know what I mean? I'm going up beyond trying to get these big names that won't fight me. Eddie, um, Chad Mendes said no, practically. Thiago Alves said no. Uh, I've called out Mike Perry. It's crickets right now. You know, no disrespect. We're cool. We see each other. We're cool. But at this point, I'm like, I'm looking for a big name to fight. Like, they gave Mike Perry, uh, Michael Venom Page and Luke Rockhold, you know what I mean? So, you know, they'll, they'll sign to fight him. So I'm like, okay, so if I can't get a name like that, then I'll take Mike Perry, then let's do a super fight. You know what I mean? And I'm pushing limits over here. He's a way bigger person than I am. And, you know, I don't think that he's, he's just aiming at something, you know, he's aiming at a bigger name himself, which is cool, but I'm at a point, man, right now where it's like, you're not gonna come into my organization trying to collect a bigger check than me and you're not facing me. That's done. Over. You want to go want, to you want to collect the big check. You got to go through me. And, and Luis, like, does it does it annoy you at all? Like, he gets this. You know, there was a lot of headlines out of this the face off with him and McGregor. Now, I don't know if McGregor will ever have the 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 gall to step into BKFC. Uh, I don't know if he'll ever fight again. But like, just the idea that like you are like the pioneer of this thing. And you don't get those opportunities. Like, how much does that bother you? Does it bother you? Like, where are you at with that? Man, I'll be very honest with you, man. First of all, I should have been there. You know, so it's my fault that I didn't show up that night. If I'd have been there and McGregor steps in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a square circle holding a title that practically belongs to me, because if he was going to fight anybody, it would be in my, in my weight class. And I would have snatched that belt right off his shoulder. It would have been nice. You know what I mean? Now, you don't get to wear this belt without fighting for it, you know? Um, that's one thing, you know, but does it bother me? No, man, kudos to, to Mike Perry. I think it's great, man. It was a great moment for him. It was a great mo moment in his life. And I'm not, I'm not an envious or jealous person. I don't point fingers at people. I, I'm just, I understand, you know, the point of view in, in, in the business marketing. You know, I, I, I understand the job that Nathan Shook has as a matchmaker and Dave Feldman as a promoter and how hard because they've tried to close fights for me. They've tried to give me these names mm -hmm. and them that are saying no. So it's not like the, the organization's fault. Is these people really want to come over here and collect a big check without facing the best. You know what I mean? Like I was supposed to fight this fight right now, Friday was supposed to be against Mike Lee. Even though James Lee deserves a title shot, he's a 75 win streak. You know, he's a champion from the UK. Good. All good. I'm good. I, you, you send me the name, I sign, let's fight. I was supposed to fight two-time WBA world champion, Austin Trout. I do the fight, you know, Canelo, do the, right. the you know, Cotto. You know, that was the only guy that had like, signed. But look at how these guys act, man. I signed to fight this dude in his hometown, right? Because I'm backing on my word. I want to fight the big names. They wanted to do the fight in his background. I'm the, I'm the defending champion. He should be fighting me in my hometown. I said, okay, no problem. I signed the check, the, the, the contract, and I send it over. Two months later, something happened with the venue. It has nothing to do with me. And now they're changing the fight to Florida. And this dude, Austin Trout, starts getting all funny, asking for more money. I'm like, hold up a second, man. I'm over here skipping you down the line, giving you a title shot after a debut. I give the Nightmare Sanchez, former UFC fighter, too. And you're over here getting funny, asking for more money because you lost hometown advantage, man. You know, so the the show didn't have it. I said, okay, so you're out. We're gonna put the real uh, number one contender. You know, so at this point, man, it's just it's the frustrating part is these people are tough outside coming to my house. They don't want to face the best. Mm -hmm. Well, he is the best. If you guys want to go watch Luis coming up on Friday at the Hard Rock, go catch him because this is like you you want to talk about watching greatness in a sport. This man is. The best to do it, double champ, unbeaten, and you guys can go catch one of Miami's own this Friday at the Hard Rock. Luis, we appreciate the time. Luis, a lot of fun. thanks, brother. Thank you. Thank you, guys.